Welcome to the Necessity Talk Show. Today we have a very special guest, very influential artist from the city of Lancaster. Ladies and gentlemen, Terry Mack. Go ahead, uh, introduce yourself a little bit. All right, so Terry and Mack, T Mack, uh, T Mack Mill, no, I've never heard about Blade and Jays or anything. Huh? I got a sandwich with them, so you know, T Mack's another name. Um, but I'm a father, we were talking about artists. Entrepreneur, um, songwriter, um, just an all around creative, really. Like, I turned my life into just being a creative. Yeah. So, that's something I really wanted to talk to you about, actually, and I'm glad that you brought it up, too. How did you get into getting this meal at Blazing Jays, like getting your own sandwich? How did that come about? Bro, so yeah, um, Really, I was just like, since from day one when they opened, like I was showing up as a fan, you know what I mean? Like I really had no connection to them. I was just showing up as a fan. Me and Dom, you said, you know, Dom. Um, we were outside, I think, eating. No, we just finished eating and we're walking and we passed Gibran, um, one of the owners. Mm -hmm. And he was like, and I've been talking to Dom about the idea. And I was just like, yo, it'd be crazy to just have my own meal there. And like, I mean, we do a, a whole collaboration and blah, blah, blah. So he's like, you should just go you know, shoot your shot. So I went and told Jabron like what I wanted to do. He was with it. It was kind of as simple as that, really. That's yeah, you know, yeah. That was cool. Yeah, because I, I had saw um on the Blazing Jays website and there was a whole video behind it, video campaign, and I was like, that's really dope. And like, you know, inspiration was, you know, just something different, you know, that art that you don't see a lot of artists doing, you know? Right. At least like uh you know, so they started doing like Travis Scott meals and whatnot. But right. you know, we got the T Mac sandwich here in Lancaster. I think Travis Scott was before T Mac. T Mac meal. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, Travis Scott ain't in Lancaster, so no, it don't not matter. at all. Yeah. But, so, talk to me about your artistry a little bit. How did you get into making music and songwriting? Um, so I was definitely writing like more poems when I was younger, like probably like late elementary, middle school. You know what I mean? I would write. I wouldn't even consider it raps. Like I was literally just like writing poems. Um, I had the opportunity to record. Um, first time I recorded. Thing. Uh, honestly, I think it was at a friend's house with like his stepdad. They were like across the street from me. Um, but a church, yeah, that's definitely what it was. I was doing that for a little bit, and then this church in Mannheim. Um, they uh, heard one of the leaders there had heard one of my like a rap, right? Mm -hmm. He was like, "Oh, so you, you write and do poems and stuff." I was like, "A little song." So then I showed him, and then they gave me a computer and a microphone. That's how I got my first computer and microphone. I wow. used like Audacity; it was free. Mm -hmm. Taught myself from then um, for songwriting and producing and stuff. And I did that for a while. Um, and then I had my son when I was like nineteen. So then you know, once that's like a reality check. You know what I mean, Cause you gotta mm -hmm. change your whole way you think of. So then I started being a dad, but like still trying to think how I could do music. Um, yeah, but it definitely started like middle school. When would you say that you started to take music like seriously? Um, I, to me, like internally, I always took it serious, but like in an actual, like figuring out how I could be real life, like doing it in a way that it made, made sense in life. It wasn't like a hobby. Mm -hmm. um, probably after I put out, um, I have this album called Babylon the Great. Um, like I was taking myself serious then, but not in a business, like I wasn't totally locked in, you know? Like I just realized I had something special. Like I had, I just realized I was on something, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, um, and at that point, like I was at Ma uh, I was at Mass Appeal, which is Nas' record label, it was in New York. I was there for a couple of days, just like meeting people and stuff. So it was like, I thought I was on something, nothing happened. And then after that is when I feel like I took myself serious, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was like a heartbreak for real. It was like, I'm calling people back home, like while I'm in New York, like, yo, this is da 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 And then nothing happens. And like, it's, it was just like a weird relationship. So after that, I think I took myself serious. And then that was like 2018, mm -hmm. 19. Yeah. So what was that, um, what was the breaking point that, that made you realize from the outcome of that album where you were like, whoa, like, I can, like, I know you said you believe in yourself, but what what gave you that, like, I can really, really do something with this, you know what I mean? I think it was really just, like, being down for so long and then not working for so long, you know what I mean? And then getting to a point where you you get recognized by people you respect, so then you, 
don't know. Like, even though it didn't work, it was like, all right, I, I know I could do it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, and that's definitely, yeah. 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 So talk to me about how you got one of your songs on the Madden soundtrack. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of time went in between, like a lot of things happened in between, like going from then to now. Um, yeah, for sure. That's definitely a big, big jump. <laughs> yeah. We could definitely circle back or whatever at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, so the Madden thing, um, have you heard of her, heard of Madden Masters? Yeah, like a record label, right? Yeah. So they do, they have an advertising agency within the label called Tr- uh, Translation. Mm-hmm. You heard of that or no? No. So it's like, you know, advertising agency. So they're making the commercials, writing the commercials, producing commercials, using music, all that. Mm-hmm. So if that's within the label, they can use artists from the label to do music and stuff. So that's kind of their selling point to get people into United Masters is like, you get with us, we have opportunities for you for sync to start, you know, pushing mm-hmm. your music. Um, with that being said, that's kind of just what happened. I made great relationships within there, kind of built like a team and they pushed for, you know, to start putting my, my stuff in places. And mm-hmm. there's, so would you say that networking is a big part of, uh, you know, your, not necessarily your artistry, but a, the business side of your artistry? No, yeah, a hundred thousand percent. Like, that's what I mean. Like, in between, in between time when I dropped uh, Babylon the Great, the album I was talking about, mm-hmm. to, to now, like, I ended up working with, like, Kanye's people. I ended up traveling, like, more than I did in my whole life, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that was all because I shot my shot with network, you know what I mean? Took myself serious, knew that I had something, believed in the vision. Didn't really compromise the vision much. Like, mm-hmm. I, I I lost relationships over stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it was just that. Like, it's like a persistent, it was a persistent hustle and grind. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and now, like, um, with the whole NFL thing, like, I can see myself teaching other people how to do it faster. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, because I see, I just, I don't know. I, see, I know, especially, how old are you? I'm 22. How old are you? 19. Dang, yeah, see, that's crazy. Like, I can see, like, the hunger in you guys, though, you know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know if y'all make music or not, but, like, your age group who makes music, I think, are just, uh, they can develop faster, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, Especially with all the tools and everything. So, I don't know, I just want to show that what I did was, like, paving the way, but, like, I'm about Mm -hmm. to, like, really help other people do it way faster. What what drives that, you know, wanting to, like, get back and help? I guess because I wish somebody would have did it for me, and like I can, and my I don't know, my son, this is kind of part of the legacy really, is like if I could be the one to pave the way and like bring a whole bunch of people with me, like that'll feel, that'll feel good for me, it'll, you know, benefit everybody around them too, because then they can start doing it. Yeah. Um, and I know how it feels really, like for real, when you're creative, and just because like from when my son was born, like we were just talking about my son's 10, right? From when my son was born up until the last, two three years like i was working full-time jobs in like factories and warehouses and stuff you know what i mean like that felt like slave work like it felt miserable you're creative like that's the last place you want to be is like a dusty warehouse on like a fort uh whatever it's even a forklift or whatever like box dusty boxes or trucks like when you're creative that stuff is not like it, it's, it slowly feels like the creative is dying in you in a sense for real so i just want to cut that as short as possible for people and help them find ways to like make money and be creative. And when you were in these lower moments, what what was it that kept you going? That kept pushing you to like, you know, want to make it? Because a lot of people give up when it gets like, you know, when it gets tough. I think about that a lot. I think it's because I had kids, um, my son. I have a daughter now too, but I think it was because I had my son. So it was like, it was only, like, it, it would be, it was actually, like I, like I said, I think about it a lot because it could be selfish to say like, yo, I should, just get, I should stop and just get a job. Um, or not selfish, that would be selfless, you know, it's just, oh, I should just stop, get a, not get a job, but like I should focus on work. Cause I was like, I don't know about y'all, but like I was jumping job to job to job because like I just wasn't a worker type of like person. Like I'm a worker, but not a, it was just, you know, working just for people to just not work out. I'm mm-hmm. simple as that. So um, yeah, just, being a being a creative wait, I don't even remember the question. I'm sorry. It was you know you're good. It was you know when I'll it got do that hard, too. You got to sometimes you might have to circle just, me back. It's all like, good. It's all good. I don't know what time we started. I watched it now. We, five minutes went by though, and like so yeah. Sometimes you got to. You good man. Don't yeah. worry. Don't worry about cool. it. It's all, all right. good. Yeah, but like when it got hard, 
and like you felt like times were really tough and you know that pressure was really building on you what what kept you going like what what made you say like yeah i gotta i gotta make a difference like i gotta i gotta do something you know yeah i'm saying that like i felt selfish to like keep going at it but i think reminding myself it was for a bigger purpose you know so it was like yeah i love music i'm passionate about music and it wasn't just music like just art and being creative in general like i do a lot outside of music um that's kind of like why i hit you up really really like to do this because i want to start talking about things i'm doing outside of music like music was more like my tool but um it was i felt selfish or like what or you know like silly sometimes being like focusing so much on something that wasn't working i think a lot of people could relate to that like you start to feel like delusional or like wasting your time whatever um so just reminding myself that it was for a bigger purpose like help me keep going like for my son like it was like okay so if i merge art music with teaching things like i'm giving back doing something i'm passionate about makes me a better father you know what i mean stuff like that so so what else are you doing other than music um so like literally this week tuesday to friday i'm going to be doing like this i'm gonna call it the Tyrion max in the, uh uh class for independent artists right now mm -hmm. But it needs a cooler name. Um, uh, but it's gonna be basically just like a crash course on like how to take yourself more serious and professionals, and then get with United Masters and just utilize everything they do because they're the only distribution company doing um, a whole platform app where you can sync, uh, submit your music for sync like NFL, NBA, all that, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm working on like some big projects that like even through like non disclosures and stuff I shouldn't talk about. But like I want people to know what's going on just so they know like it's possible, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. From artists to to big uh like sports agencies and stuff. Mm -hmm. And is this mainly for uh, musical artists? Yeah, definitely. Hundred yeah, that's yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. And what made you decide that you like you wanted to give a, a talk just because you wanted to just give back that knowledge like you were saying earlier? At the class? Yeah. So the class is actually really hands on. Like you could show up and just listen to me and you probably won't benefit as much as if you take notes and like how, like I'm gonna literally be going over websites and stuff that you need to like get on make an account mm -hmm. and everything to like literally set you up so that the next day you could go submit a song or something and shoot your shot to get on something nice and is this a one-time thing or are you looking to no continue? yeah it's it's one time as of right now but like it's definitely gonna happen again um this is really just to have proof of concept Copy. um and it's just gonna be bigger and you know, across the world, really. Like, I could see me going to schools in, like, London or everywhere because there's musicians and music everywhere and people need to... It's pretty much the same system everywhere, too, so... Have you always been, like, a person who comes up with, like, a lot of ideas and, like, executes? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, so, like, I'm... I have a whole notebook. Um, I usually have it with me. I have this whole notebook that, like, there's no lyrics in it. It's all just, like, ideas and plans like from how i'm gonna get rent to like what's the next couple ideas i want to execute so yeah like i, I like flood ideas mm -hmm. onto a notebook and just i literally like cross off i have like a whole legend like you know like i put a star if it's done cross it out if it's not gonna happen like when i wanted to or whatever like so yeah i have a whole system of how i mm. do my goals and things yeah so i, I shoot for a lot what was the process like of taking your art and being able to monetize off of it. What was that like in the beginning? And and was it like scary? And just just kind of talk about that process. Yeah, no, it wasn't scary, but you feel like um what's it called? Uh imposter syndrome or something like that. You, mm -hmm. you kind of feel like that because you're like, dang, like I don't even value myself at that. So how am I supposed to sell a painting at that price if I don't even value it that much? It's like, oh you can have it. And then people are like, you gotta stop just giving stuff away or whatever. Um, so for me, like it started with, I think for real, for real, maybe um, during COVID I did it, it was called a I Don't Care mixed, uh, I Don't Care package, right? And it was a mixtape that had 30 songs on it. It came with a t-shirt and a painting for $50. And I did like 30 of them in a week. So it was fire to see people receiving that well. And it was as simple as a private link for the music. I paint a canvas like ahead of time so I had them ready let them kind of pick from what I had or some or actually some people gave me ideas and I would do it um and then a t-shirt you know what I mean and that was like really my first time like selling paintings and like figuring out a way to make money off what I'm doing um and I guess yeah that's what now I feel like I monetize everything really well mm -hmm. for the most part but that's how it started yeah yeah would you say that like um you know, what, what were some of like, 
what were some of the biggest hurdles that you had to, you know, get over in the beginning that that uh, got you to being more comfortable monetizing right. yourself? Mm, that's a good question. I don't know. Maybe just like doing it over and over. You know what I mean? Like just shooting like because it's not like every time i post like hey i'm selling this or doing this it sells you know so just i guess there's definitely people who are like that does happen to them and then they want to quit or whatever you know what i mean like they they're like ah you know nobody wanted to buy my stuff the first week i posted it the second week i posted it and then that's they burn out and just kind of quit rather than like come up with new creative ideas and then people are like oh that's actually kind of dope i'll support that you know what i mean mm -hmm. So I think it was that's it was just that like just doing it over and over, come up with new ways to be creative, innovative, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. What would you say are some of your biggest inspirations when it comes to your art? Hmm. You know who Banksy is? Yeah. You know who Basquiat is? Of course. Um, them two, Virgil, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, I'm really not even a whole like super artsy person i'm just like really big on validating yourself and self-expression like that's literally what i do in schools with music therapy i mean uh art therapy is what i call it so and i call it that because i'm really just teaching kids how to be comfortable with whatever it is they draw so if i'm in the class i'm like yo we're all going to draw flowers like just because your flower doesn't look like my flower doesn't mean you're a bad artist it's literally the whole idea of like abstract art being a lifestyle like mm -hmm. Just because you don't look like or act like so and so doesn't mean nothing. You know what I mean, it's your way of expressing yourself. So, abstract art could mean absolutely nothing to one person and be a masterpiece to somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know, when when did you start uh, going to schools and start teaching art therapy? Um, I only just started calling it art therapy because I realized what I was doing. Um, but the whole school thing started with uh, Sir Dominique, really. Um, that's like my brother, but we started linking like a couple years, like maybe right at uh, when COVID happened, right? So I think he was in an educator, like a paraprofessional or something in um, Lincoln. He was doing something in Lincoln as a teaching role, though. And uh, we just kind of were talking about ideas on it. Um, me and me, him and a, like really it was a group of everybody. And we all kind of we all still do. We all just kind of branched out and do our thing. But that's really how it started. It was just all just talking about ideas like. Yo, when COVID's over, like, I'm not trying to go back to work. You know what I mean? When COVID's over, we're going to find a way to make this a reality, all these ideas we talk about. So, and it really, it really happened. So that's the crazy part. Because, it, yeah, it happened fast. Like I said, the COVID, not like two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say is, like, um, one of your, like, biggest, I, correct me if I already asked you this question, but what would you say is, like, one of your biggest driving factors in your career? Yeah, you kind of did, but it's cool. Like, I get what you're saying. Um, again, like, just knowing, like, I need to leave some kind of legacy. Because, like, my family, like, there was nobody in my family that graduated high school, college, owns, like, a property or um, really does anything, right? So just knowing, like, I couldn't be that. Like, I had to, like, to this day, like, I'm... I feel like I'm like I don't know like uh, sleep doesn't mean much like I'm going hard like day in day out like I'm probably crazy to some people. Would you consider yourself an entrepreneur? A thousand percent. Like I make I go make my own money. Um, I don't work for anybody. I, like all my money is generated through my business. You know, mm -hmm. I pay myself. What's your business? Uh, larger than life. That's the label, the business, the brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when did you, you started that in? Um, During COVID. During COVID. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what was that like starting something, you know, starting your own like label like uh So I didn't even really start it as a label. I just started it with I did that's what's crazy, right? I really just started it knowing I was gonna do something with it, right? Like I didn't start the business because I had a bunch of business coming in, like and things were going good. I started it like I know this is gonna turn into something. Mm -hmm. And um it started with like I was doing sessions, recording people, because that's like something I do. I'm an audio engineer. Mm -hmm. So I was recording people. Um I was uh, shoot like DJing like school events or whatever like stuff like that. Um, it was little stuff like that that like now I do like more frequently, mm -hmm. and just everything goes through the business. And I, I, I literally don't work for anybody. I just do my. I, like I said, like I seem it would seem like I'm crazy, but that's what it takes for me to be able to like keep generating the next thing. And as a creative, what was it like? You know, balancing business and creativity. 
That's actually, it's, it is a really hard part, for real, for real. That's, um, I made, like, these outfits, and, like, that's kind of, the one was, like, a suit with graffiti on it and stuff, and that was the whole idea of it, it was, like, uh, imagine a businessman, like, pulling up to a meeting, whatever, like, some crazy, like, you know, suited up meeting, and he has that on, you know? It's, like, just to mesh those two worlds of art and business um, seems frowned upon within, like, the business world or the art world. Even you know what I mean, like art. Oh, like how how often we hear like artists like oh, um, all these trying to do is make money or like even if it's like a bigger artist or something like oh like but it's like bro that's business right like you don't want to make money, <laughs> like we, like you want to be like a dope artist and broke like who wants to do that? Um, so I think it's frowned upon in both parts. So I'm just big on meshing those. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And teaching that too. Um, was there any hurdles that you had to get over? You know, between like the early stages of business and kind of getting your footing to to a point where you got it comfortable. For sure, I'm still doing that. I, like, yeah, a thousand percent. Because there's so many times where like, like you don't know me, but like there's a thousand times where a day where like somebody asks me to do something and I'm 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 not good at saying no. You know what I mean? And like, I'm not good at saying like, yeah, I can do that. But can you? Uh, I charge two fifty for that, or I charge this for that. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not good at that. So it is something I'm doing. It's like something I battle every day. Is like, how do I? It's like a. Like I almost marketing have to yourself? do, huh? Like marketing yourself? Not just marketing myself. Um, being my own salesman for my own business is like. Imagine like most times a salesman is selling something for somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like I have to be my own. I have to do all that. Mm -hmm. as of now and like that's as being a creative and like somebody that like wants to be a genuine person like that's hard to do because like a lot of stuff I know most of the stuff came from doing it out of the love you know what I mean like I wasn't getting paid at first to do a lot of what I do mm -hmm. so it's like I want to I want to be able to do it for the love but like I have to be a business I gotta be an entrepreneur so that's what I do yeah and finally what advice would you give to somebody who's just starting out and you know, wants to get started as an as an artist or, you know, maybe, you know, start a label business. Like, what advice would you give to somebody like that? I would say, like, study it and, like, look it up as much as possible before you say it's, like, what you want to do. You know, like, my biggest, that's, like, how I say, like, what I'm doing with this class is I want to save people time. But, like, I don't want people to feel like, oh, I want to be an artist or I want to be a rapper, right? Um, so much and I want to deal so bad but like you have no clue what you're really like aiming for you just like want an image like you don't want to be the, you don't want to do the work and be that you want to be the image of it um, so I just want I would just say that like, like, people should know like what it is you really want like be real with yourself find out ways to make it work because that's I think that's where a lot of people artists specifically waste time is like they'll drop music for years because they want a deal. Like, they want something specific, but it never feels like it goes how you want it to. So just really do your research. And I guess that, too, like, just know that it's things are... You'll never really feel satisfied. Like, you got to just do what you're really passionate about. So then when the time do get hard, quitting's not even an option because, like, the passion is there at the end of the day. You know what I mean? And if it's you want to be an artist, if it's you want to be an artist... And you complaining like that it's not working right, then maybe like being an artist isn't really what you want because the artist is going to do it regardless if you get paid or not because it's the passion. So yeah, if it's the lifestyle that you want, then you might want to figure out something to get the lifestyle, not the art. All right. Thank you so much. No, thank you, I appreciate bro. this. Yeah. Uh, shout yourself out. Tell the people where they can find you. Shoot. So Terry and Mac, at Terry and underscore Mac on everything really. Um, I guess I'm gonna be everywhere. You're gonna see me. Um, if you don't know me, um, if you do, we got a lot of work to do. Thank you, everybody, tuning in. Thank you all for you know, appreciate it. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Appreciate it.